Welcome to episode 264 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. I'm your host, Kim Newlove. This is my winter 2024 update. It's February, and I'll tell you, it still feels like winter here in Ohio. The days are short, the weather's cold, and everybody is looking forward to spring. If you are new to this show, welcome. My seasonal updates give you an opportunity to get to know me better as a person. I'll update you on my business, my podcast, my personal life, and what I've been listening to, reading, watching, and playing. That last part is my favorite part. All right, let's go. Just a little background for you, just in case you've never met me, you've never heard my podcast before. Again, my name is Kim Newlove. I'm your host. I am a pharmacist by training. I graduated from the University of Toledo College of Pharmacy with my BS Farm in 2001. Never got my PharmD. I'm a BS Farm RPH. I have experience in hospital, retail, compounding, and behavioral health. I'm not in clinical practice anymore. Right now, I am a voice actor and a podcast host. When I say voice actor, by the way, I want you to think medical narrator. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for pharmacists, usually women pharmacist authors, and I do medical narration for a variety of companies, pharma, biotech, CME companies, that's continuing medical education companies, medical device companies, teaching hospitals, universities, and more. I also teach two self-paced online courses. One of those courses is about drug name pronunciations. I love that topic. That's my jam. And the other online course is a podcast planning course for pharmacy professionals. If you have a project in mind, whether it's an audiobook, a narration project, or something podcast-related, send me a message through the contact form on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. And if you want to learn more about the drug name pronunciation course or the podcast planning course, visit my online course platform on kimnewlove.com. That's kimnewlove.com. Usually, in my seasonal updates, I share why I became a voice actor and a podcast host, what my episodes are about, who my audience is, and more for additional background information. But I'm skipping that today. You can hear all about that in my previous fall, winter, spring, and summer updates. Links are in the show notes for episode 264 on thepharmacistvoice.com. Now, let's dig into this update, Business First this season. Business first in the winter update. As I mentioned earlier, I am a pharmacist, voice actor, and podcast host. The name of my business is The Pharmacist's Voice. I'll keep the business update brief. However, I do want to touch on five topics. I'll just list them first, then we'll dive deep into each one. Number one, my 2024 vision board. Two, a book that I'm writing. Three, two newsletters that I'm starting four, clients that I'm seeking, and number five, a gig that I'm lining up. Let's go with the 2024 vision board first. This is a good story. My friend, mentor, podcast guest, and Metapreneur's co-founder, Dr. Michelle Fritch, led a three-hour vision board workshop online in January. I attended and I loved it. Michelle did an amazing job of inviting our group of healthcare entrepreneurs to think about all of this stuff. I'll list it for you. Professional wins in 2023, personal wins in 2023, biggest lessons learned, unexpected losses, where we did the most good for someone, and things left undone in 2023. January is an ideal time to think about all of this, by the way. And then we moved on to thinking about the professional wins we're seeking in 2024. Personal wins we want, too, in 2024. Three barriers or things I know I need to learn. Biggest fears. How we want to help others. What would be awesome but feels just beyond my reach And what is a big, hairy, audacious goal or BHAG you're almost afraid to say out loud? Great topics and questions. It was a lot to think about. 
I am very happy that Michelle paused for, it would seem like five to ten minutes after a few questions and let us all reflect and write things down. You can probably tell now why it was a three-hour workshop, right? In the end, I had a 2024 vision board with pictures, which I made on Canva, and also a narrative to describe the meaning of each picture. I have a kiddo with autism. I am used to communicating in pictures. This was right up my alley, and I loved it. And I, throughout writing this uh, outline for my podcast episode today, have decided that I am going to pencil in a an episode about my vision board for March 29th of 2024. So I will give you an update on what the vision board says, what the pictures are, and how it's going. Sorry to leave you hanging, but that is all I'm going to say about that. The vision board really does deserve its own episode with a YouTube video so you can see the vision board and all my pictures. Coming soon, you'll see that in March. All right, moving on. I'll tell you about the book that I'm writing next. Here's a little backstory, just in case you don't know. I offer a range of services, and one of those services is podcast planning. I enjoy and am good at organizing information. My colleague, Dr. Janan Sarwar, who's been on this podcast at least twice, is helping me publish a short book about podcast planning for pharmacy professionals. The name of her publishing company is Publishing in Doses. That's Publishing in Doses. There's a link to it in the show notes for episode 264 on thepharmacistvoice.com. At this point, you might be wondering, how's that going for you, Kim? <laughs> It's going fine. I don't know why I'm having some nervous laughter here. Writing is going fine. Writing has actually taken up at least an hour a day just this month, February. I meant to have it done mid-January, but it's February and I'm just getting started. The introduction and chapter one are done, or at least the rough drafts. And as I record this, I'm just going to say that it's going well. It's surprisingly easier than I expected. I should have guessed that, though, because I'll tell you why. I'm using content from my online course about podcast planning. It took me more than a year to finalize that online course. So with all the time I put into it, it's kind of, it makes sense that it's going well writing the book. All the work has been done for months. All I have to do is cherry pick what I want to put into the book. What also helped was writing a monthly article series for my Toastmasters Club, which is called Westgate Toastmasters Club 3159. I want to say real quick, thank you to Christy Gustin, who is our past president, and she started taking over the newsletter for an older gentleman who no longer belongs to the club and used to write the newsletter. Christy invited me to write that article series, and once I got started, you couldn't stop me. I got her done. I started writing the series in November of 2022, and it concluded just a few months ago. I guess it would have been in October of 2023. Got it done. It was a 12-part series. What also helped with the book writing that I'm doing right now is that I have taught an in-person podcasting 101 class locally, and I developed an awesome handout for it. Some of the content from that handout will also be in the book. I'm super excited about what I'm doing. Uh, So in summary, I know my stuff, and it is fun and easy to write this book. I just need to put in the time. Can't wait to finish it. And then, of course, I'm going to narrate the audiobook version. This is one of those rare times when the intersection of being a pharmacist and a voice actor totally pays off. It totally pays off. So, again, I am writing a book. Next up, I'll talk about my newsletters, plural. I've got two that I'm starting. That was the third thing on my list when we started talking about the business part of this update. I am starting a newsletter for my business and also one for my local podcast. The local podcast is called The Perrysburg Podcast. The Perrysburg Podcast. 
You can sign up for the Perrysburg Podcast newsletter, even if you don't live here. You just go to perrysburgpodcast.com and click the link to sign up for the email list. It's just that easy. The Perrysburg Podcast has nothing to do with pharmacy or my business. It is my hobby podcast. I started that so I could give back to my community. To learn more, go to perrysburgpodcast.com. The sign-up for the Pharmacist Voice newsletter is not open yet, but I will keep you posted. Both newsletters should be up and running by the end of next month, which is March 2024. Why start a newsletter? In both cases, all I want to do is be able to email people notifications about new podcast episodes, upcoming events, opportunities to work with me, and what's next on my podcast production schedule. Item number four on my business update is clients that I am seeking. All right, I'm letting you into my private world here. I don't know if I should say this out loud, but here goes. APHA and OPA, I want to work with you. I have reached out to both the American Pharmacists Association and the Ohio Pharmacists Association. As a pharmacist who excels at podcast planning and production, I want to be part of your podcast production teams. APHA, you are the American Pharmacists Association. As the voice of pharmacy in America, I want to help you publish a podcast on a regular basis. The last episode of Locked on Pharmacy podcast was published in July 2023. A lot has happened since then, and your podcast has been silent. Let's work together, APHA. I can help. Same thing with OPA. You are the Ohio Pharmacists Association, and I love you. I am an Ohio pharmacist. You have the opportunity to get into the ears of your pharmacists on a regular basis. Good things are happening in Ohio. Let's connect. I can help you. All right, the fifth and final piece of my business update is a live gig that I'm lining up. Two gigs, actually. I am working with my local library here in Perrysburg, Ohio, to teach a one-time Podcasting 101 class. And later this year, I hope to teach another Podcasting 101 class at the 577 Foundation. Again, that's the 577 Foundation, which, among other things, is a folks learning center here in Perrysburg, Ohio. What it is is locals teaching other locals. Looking forward to both of those gigs, summer and fall, the library in the summer, 577 Foundation in the fall. Details on both of those in my spring update in May. Let's move on. My winter update also covers my podcast, my family, and my favorite part, what I've been listening to, reading, watching, and playing. I love to have fun. That's why that last part is my favorite part. The podcast update will be brief because I just talked about it a lot in my four-year podcast anniversary episode, which was episode 261. In that episode, I announced my production schedule for the entire fifth year of the show, and I outlined my new format. Here's the cliff notes. I will be publishing one episode per week like I have been, instead of talking about my journey from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host, there will be some changes. Two episodes per month will be drug name pronunciation episodes. Those are my most popular episodes by far. My audience really seems to like them. So instead of one episode per month being a drug name pronunciation episode, I will do two per month in 2024. I will also publish an interview with one pharmacist podcaster per month in 2024, and then that leaves only 16 shows that I have to do something with. In those 16 shows, I have plans. I will have a podcast anniversary episode in January. I know I just did that last month. There will be another one next January. It's something I do every single January. I will also have seasonal updates. I will do the winter update in February, spring update in May, summer update in August, and the fall update in November. In March, I will do a poison prevention awareness episode. I will do a vision board episode in March, which I just mentioned just a few minutes ago. In April, I will do an autism awareness and acceptance episode. 
The Pharmacist Authors Series returns to the podcast in June, July, and August. I'll have a Veterans Day episode in November and a medication safety episode with Matt Grissinger from ISMP to be announced when, I am not sure. I'm hoping for May. I have just a few openings for other solo and interview shows, just a handful. I'm hoping to interview my other audiobook accountability buddy. Her name is Laura. Laura, if you're listening, hi. (laughs) I'd like to interview Laura in one of those openings because she has advice for pharmacist authors who want to narrate their own audiobooks. She is an audiobook narrator, and she has a lot of great advice. That does it for my podcast update. Let's move on to my family. Family is very important to me, but this will be a very short update about my family. I'll mention something about each member of the family. That includes my husband, Nathan, of course, and our adult sons, Craig and Derek. Craig will be 21 soon, and Derek is 18. And of course, I'll mention a few things about myself. Then we'll move on to my favorite part, which I already said is what I've been listening to, reading, watching, and playing. Nathan first. Nathan is my husband, of course. He's been back at First Solar for a year now. I can't believe it. Time flies. He's been working for them on and off since 2007. If you've never heard of First Solar, it's a solar panel manufacturer in Perrysburg, Ohio. My husband is good at his job, and he likes it. As for our sons, Craig and Derek, I'll be brief. Craig will turn 21 in just a few days. Hard to believe my first baby is going to be 21. He has autism, but he likes adult beverages, just like most typical American young men. (laughs) So we're going to take Craig out for his first legal drink on his birthday. He'll turn 21 on February 21st. 21 on the 21st. That has a ring to it. Now on to Derek. Derek is our 18-year-old son who is attending the University of Cincinnati and majoring in architectural engineering. In his spare time, Derek works part-time at the rec center on campus as a referee. Right now, he's refereeing five-on-five basketball games. I know he's also brushing up on his skills so he can umpire baseball games here in Northwest Ohio when he comes back after spring semester ends. We're looking forward to seeing him whenever he comes home. Hopefully, it's for his brother's birthday, but if not, hopefully we'll see him spring break. We love him and we miss him. It's my turn. Here's an update on me. I would like to say that my family and I had a nice Thanksgiving and Christmas Lots of family time, wouldn't trade it for the world, Uh, but winter is tough for me because of all that family time. I work from home, and everybody's in the house and in my space. (laughs) I am playing catch-up right now, still, trying to catch up from Thanksgiving through New Year's, and then all of the days off we had from school because of inclement weather and MLK Junior Day and a long Christmas, uh, yeah, I guess a long Christmas break, you could say. Holy cow, it's a lot of time off. So from Thanksgiving until right about now, I feel like I'm playing catch up. My husband hates it when I talk about this kind of thing, but I need to keep it real in case there's somebody listening to this who is also a pharmacist entrepreneur or an entrepreneur of some kind and needs to hear that I struggle with work-life balance in the winter too. Life is not easy. We all do the best we can, but I do struggle. All right, I talked about some struggles, but there's a lot that I'm looking forward to this spring too. Winter's almost over. I'm already looking forward to spring. One of the things that I'm looking forward to is the annual meeting of the Ohio Pharmacists Association. That's in April in Columbus, Ohio. If you're an Ohio pharmacist and you're going to that meeting, please stop by and say hello to me at the trade show. I will likely be roaming around with a microphone. Something else I'm looking forward to is keeping up with my billing as an independent provider through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. If you don't know this, I am a paid caregiver on my son's care team. That is through the Ohio Shared Living Program. It's unique to Ohio. 
Why is this something that I'm looking forward to? It's because I finally took the time to figure out how to track my hours worked compared to my hours paid. They don't give us pay stubs. I was feeling really, really frustrated about knowing if I was getting paid right. Right now, I'm feeling really good about how things are going, and I can't complain because I put in the time to figure it out. That's what you have to do with anything in life. You get curious and you figure it out. Again, I'm feeling really good about how things are going, and I can't complain. If you're in Ohio and you're both living with and caring for an adult with a developmental disability full-time, look into becoming an Ohio Shared Living Provider through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. My County Board of Developmental Disabilities was very helpful getting me set up with everything I needed. One last thing that I'm looking forward to on a personal level is traveling this summer. I plan to visit Germany and Canada. Random combination, I know, but there are good reasons for both. Number one, my sister lives in Germany. And number two, I want to take my kids to Canada. Back to my sister, she lives in a small town called Marbach am Neckar. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but she is studying abroad at this time. She's older than I am, but this is possibly going to turn into a second career. We'll find out. It will be awesome if my whole family, like my husband and my kids, can go, but right now we're still working out the details. More on that in the spring update. Why go to Canada? Two reasons. Number one, I want to take both of our boys to Windsor, Ontario, Canada. And number two, I want to take both boys to Niagara Falls. I keep saying I, but I mean my husband and I. So why Windsor? Because, believe it or not, that was where I went to party when I was going to the University of Toledo. It's only like an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half from my house. Back when I went to the University of Toledo, it was maybe an hour from there. Back before 2001, back before 9-11, you could just go over with your driver's license, too. I never had to have a passport. It was different times, let me tell you. Anyways, I used to party up there. I believe Windsor is a college town, lots of great bars and a casino. It was really fun. And the gambling age was 19. Drinking and gambling ages were 19. I believe the drinking age and gambling age is still 19, and my younger son, Derek, turns 19 in April. So my husband and I want to give him a taste of what we used to do back in the 90s. We're going to Windsor. I haven't been back since 2001-ish. Can't remember anything after 2001. As for Niagara Falls, they're beautiful. They're famous. It's a great tourist destination. I want us to take our kids to see them from both the New York side and the Canadian side. Lots of planning in my future, I'm sure you can tell, but I'm looking forward to every minute of the vacations. That wraps up my family update. Now on to my favorite part of the episode, which is an update on what I've been listening to, reading, watching, and playing. What have I been listening to? Well, once I stopped listening to Christmas music, I started listening to some recent favorites, like the Zac Brown Band and a playlist that I made last year around this time that is filled with a range of artists, from Billy Joel to Imagine Dragons, Three Doors Down, Daughtry, and Queen. So much more, but those are some of my favorites. For podcasts, I listen to the School of Podcasting podcast every Monday. It's my favorite. But I also really, truly enjoyed episode 32 of Disrupt Podcast. I'll put a link to that in the show notes for episode 264 on thepharmacistvoice.com. For that episode of Disrupt, Dr. Justin Cole, the host, interviewed a mystery guest. I've never heard anybody not reveal the name of their guest. That was so interesting. But this mystery guest is both a pharmacist and a medical missionary in Africa. Amazing interview and very on brand for them. Very on brand for that podcast. Loved it. You should listen to that if you are a pharmacist and or a Christian. And speaking of being a Christian, I am one. And I just finished listening to the NIV version of the Bible on audiobook. 
That was a long one. That was 75 hours long. I listened to one to two books per week for about 12 months to get her done. I'm glad I listened to the entire Bible, and I would definitely recommend the audiobook route if you've always wanted to read the Bible, but you just don't feel like you have time. What am I reading now that I'm done with the Bible? Now I'm listening to a book called Soonish. Soonish by Kelly and Zach Wienersmith. The name of the book is spelled S-O-O-N-I-S-H, Soonish. It's about 10 emerging technologies that will improve and or ruin everything. It's very tacky and nerdy, but it's also funny. For example, they talked about the benefits of building a space elevator, but they also talk about what could go wrong. They use humor instead of gloom and doom language. I appreciate that. Overall, I like it. I'm about halfway through. Links to the Bible and Soonish on audiobook are both in the show notes for episode 264 of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. What have I been reading? Mostly books with Craig. Printed books with Craig. We read a number of Christmas books between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. We keep them in a big plastic box and we get through as many as we can. One of the books that we read was actually a young adult or, I guess, adult fiction book called Skipping Christmas. Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. Great book. There's also a movie version of that book, and it is called Christmas with the Cranks. Of course, we read the book, then watched the movie. Then we read a lot of other little books. Little books. We read Stuart Little, Tuck Everlasting, and The Bridge to Terabithia. We love to read a book and then watch the movie, so Tuck Everlasting and Bridge to Terabithia were definitely book-movie combos for us. We haven't picked out our next book yet, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to pick A Man Called Uva. Hopefully I said that right, Uva. That was made into a major motion picture starring Tom Hanks, but the movie is actually called A Man Called Otto, O-T-T-O, Otto. That does it for what I've been reading. What have I been watching? As a family, we watched Survivor in December, and then we watched the latest season of The Amazing Race just with Craig. Derek already went back to college by then. My Sunday school class finished watching The Bible Project series of YouTube videos. If you haven't seen those and you want to read the Bible, they do help you understand what you are reading. I appreciate them. I also continue to enjoy my SNL skits on YouTube. I love SNL. What a a topic change, by the way, going from the Bible to talking about SNL. Anyways, I continue to enjoy SNL skits on YouTube and many of my other favorite channels like The Holderness Family and The Girl with the Dogs and Mama Dr. Jones. Nothing new there. So I'll move on to telling you about the last series that my husband and I finished. We watched Ted Lasso and we loved it. It was awesome. I was kind of sad when it ended because I was like, what do I watch now? I've I've got a, a TV series hangover that was so good. We haven't found a new TV series to watch yet. And that does it for what I've been watching. What have I been playing? When Derek was home over Christmas break, we played Ticket to Ride Nordic Countries and Settlers of Catan. And last weekend, my husband and I played cards in a euchre tournament. We didn't win anything, but we ate tasty snacks, we met a lot of fun people, we had fun, and we helped raise money to benefit the Golden Retriever Rescue Resource. That is an organization that helps rescue golden retrievers from puppy mills, among other places. And there were dogs there at the Euchre Tournament, so we got some puppy snuggles, too. That was probably the best part. With that, I will wrap this episode up. This has been my winter update on my business, my podcast, my family, and what I've been listening to, reading, watching, and playing. Thanks for joining me for episode 264 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes, you'll find links to Metapreneurs, Publishing in Doses, Westgate Toastmasters, the Perrysburg podcast, and more. By the way, Visitor's Day at my Toastmasters Club is next Friday, February 16th. 
If you're a local, come on out. But if you'd like to join us remotely via Zoom, definitely check out that link in the show notes. Again, it's called Westgate Toastmasters. If you know someone who might like this episode, please share it with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you next Friday.